So today we shall be starting unit 2 and the name of this unit in this syllabus is block diagram, signal flow graph and seat variable techniques. The content are as follows. So we'll be discussing about block, block diagram representation and reduction techniques followed by signal flow graph and Mason's gain formula. Then we'll be representing systems in various forms of state variables and therefore we'll be talking about the concepts of controllability and observability. So each of these things will be discussed in this unit. In fact, a block diagram and signal flow graph are uh, also a form of a system representation. So this particular unit is nothing but a, a type of system representation wherein block diagrams will be representing system mathematically in the form of blocks. And in signal flow, flow graph, you'll be again representing uh, the gains of the blocks or the mathematical representation of the blocks in the form of uh, signals that will be flowing through uh, uh, the arrows which are nothing but SFGs, called as SFGs, signal flow graph. And then another type of mathematical representation called as a state variable technique which is one of the important representation of system and its benefit over all other type of representation will be discussed because this is something, the state variable technique is something that is being used widely in uh, system representation in anywhere where you prefer representing systems. So what is block diagram representation? And you have seen such, of such sort of representation in the previous unit. So they provide a mathematically simplified relation between the input and output of the system. A system can be represented by the schematic diagram containing all the components and their connection. So one form of representation of system is their schematic representation, which is also a simplified form of representation. Uh, for instance, we talk about, uh, so I have a, a representation in website, and I'll show this. Yeah, so suppose that you're given a system com comprising of uh, liquid, this system is a liquid level control comprising of a wall, and this wall is nothing but a commercially used tab so you can control this wall using controller and then you have input and inlet water inlet and then you want to control the level of fluid inside the stack which has another output with the wall so suppose that you are sensing the level of fluid level of the liquid using a float which after sensing the level sends the signal to the controller in order to operate the wall accordingly so if you suppose this is the reference and, and reference level, the level at which you want your water to stop, then you will be controlling the wall using the controller accordingly. So this is an automatic process. So this process can be represented by a schematic as shown here. So this is the schematic of the process. So this is one form of representation of the system in order to understand pictorially. But for complicated systems, this form of representation may not be suitable. For example, if you talk about the same system, it's not very complicated, but if you uh, want to represent the system, you'll again uh, have to draw the schematics again and again. So that makes things a bit difficult, drawing the wall, the tap, and again, the whole tank filled with water, the level, uh, the uh, wall at the output side. So things will be difficult to draw in a schematics again and again. So a simpler form of representation is the block diagram representation. So such systems may be represented by block diagrams. So again, if I show you the same uh, representation of this system in the form of blocks, so it's shown below. So this is a block diagram representation of the same system. So suppose that you have a reference level and then you are going to check this level, the reference input or the input that you desire with the actual level that is being achieved. So this is the achieved level or the actual level. So this is being sensed by a sensor, which is nothing but the position of float being fed to the controller. So the position of float is being sensed and compared with the required level. So the difference is then fed to the controller, which actuates the valve through which the in in input water or inlet water is being filled to the tank. So this part is the process, this becomes the controller and then you have a sensor. We have not shown, they have not shown the sensor here. So, but they are talking about uh, some mechanism that 
through the floor test sensing delivery. Nowadays, you have good, uh, good uh, digital sensors such, such as the uh, sensors which are capable of using infrared type based. So infrared signals are being sent and then received. The distance is being calculated. The time is being calculated. So you have ultrasonic sensors which are uh, also very accurate. So in block diagram, each block is completely characterized by its own transfer function. So when you have block diagram representation, for example, if you look at the same diagram, so you have uh, different blocks. So block corresponding controller, there will be a block. So this block will be comprising of mathematical relations, relations between the output of the block and the input. That is nothing but the transfer function of this particular controller or block, like which will be having transfer function of the wall, a relation between output and input of the wall. Likewise, you'll be having transfer function of different blocks. So block diagram representation is characterized by uh, is comprised of a block which is characterized by its own transfer function. So each block will be having its own transfer function. And multiple systems connected together may be represented by block diagram where each block and its corresponding transfer function may, be represent, may represent individual system. So you may have different systems connected together. So uh, it means that you might be operating any system or any uh, machine that will be accompanying multiple systems. So in this particular example, so this is only one system. This is a single system, but you might be having multiple systems connected together. So you may be have a, having another system followed following this, then another system following this. So there will be multiple systems in uh, a machine in a place. So there again, you will be bound to represent each system by its block. So having the transfer function of each system separately or individual systems. So this is where block diagram, block diagram representation plays key role and makes problem of such type where things will be difficult to portray and block diagram will be make things easier to uh, look at. Then we have block diagram reduction. So why do we require this? So a complete control system in block diagram form may consist of many interconnected blocks. So this is the, this, this is discussed in the previous slide. Why do we have many interconnected blocks? To find the overall transfer function of a system represented by a sequence of blocks, certain set of rules are applied to reduce it into a single. So this is why you require block diagram reduction. When, once you acquire the block diagram representation of any system, then in order to find the transfer function of that particular system, you will be reducing the block representation of that system using certain set of rules. This single block, after reduction, you will be obtaining single block. And this single block provides the transfer function of the overall system. For instance, we talk about the armature control DC motor and field control DC motor in previous unit. We saw that the schematic of uh, armature control was something like this. And we further obtained the block diagram representation of the system accompanying three blocks. So this particular block represents the armature part of the motor. While this particular part represents the uh, load side, load of the uh, load connected to the motor. Well, this is the back EMF, or you can say that this is something which acts as a feedback. So this is the armature load and feedback. So these blocks represent individual parts of the armature control DC motor and can be, by applying certain set of rules called block diagram reduction technique, can finally obtain the uh, representation in this form, which is nothing but the transfer function of armature control DC motor. So we obtain this transfer function by mathematical relations through the basic laws that governs the system dynamics. And when we solve that using Laplace transform and finally obtain the relation between an input and output, we obtain this relation, transfer function. But we can, in other ways, if we know the block diagram representation of that system, then from that block diagram representation, we can obtain the final transfer function simply by applying those set of rules that comes under block diagram reduction technique. Similarly, in case of field control, you had two blocks representing different uh, parts of the system and they can further be re reduced by applying block diagram reduction technique into final transfer function. So this is the final transfer function of the field control DC motor. 
So what are the set of rules that need to be applied when you want to obtain the final transfer function? So there, there are certain, I think, six rules that will be discussed today. The first rule says that the, when the blocks are connected in cascade or series, we call this as cascade connection or series connection. So in such blocks, what you do is you simply have to multiply all the transfer function of individual block in order to obtain the final transfer function of the block. So the, this blocks can be reduced into the uh, transfer function, each transfer function multiplied together. So when two or more blocks are connected in cascade or series, the resultant block is a product of individual block transfer function. So this is what it says. So you have product of each of these uh, three transfer functions. Sorry, so it's, it should be G1, G2 and G3. Here's a slight correction. So G1, G2, G3, which are individual block transfer function, will be multiplied together in order to obtain the final transfer function between this input and this output. So suppose if I assume the signal to be X, then what I get at output of uh, G, block G1 will be X times G1. So signal will be multiplied by the transfer function G1. And let's say the signal is Y. The output signal is Y. The signal that we get at the output of G2 will be X, G1, G2. And finally, the output at G3 will be Y, which is, which is nothing but X, G1, G2, and G3. So if you see the transfer function of the system this is nothing but y the output upon input and if you evaluate from this y by x you get this as g1 g2 g3 so this is what is written over here so if you have input here as x output is y then the transfer function will be the multiplication for all the individual block transfer function g1 g2 and g3 now, if suppose that you have blocks that are connected in parallel. So I guess uh, this thing is clear to all. And if you face, if you don't, if you're not able to understand it, you can ask me questions. Does anybody, anybody has a problem with what I did now explain? I guess the uh, things are clear. So somebody posted that please give solutions of yesterday's quiz. I, I'll be discussing the quiz today. So after the lecture, you just don't worry about it. So if the blocks are connected in parallel, what does parallel mean? So in order to differentiate between blocks in cascade and in parallel, so it's important to understand the difference. So blocks in cascade or series means that they will be okay, straightforward connected in series. The output of one block will be fed as input to the other. And the output of the second block will be fed to the third. And output of third will be fed to the fourth like, and so on. While in case of blocks in parallel, what you have, you have a single input fed to all the blocks simultaneously. And the output from all the blocks will be fed to a comparator in order to sum out uh, difference between the input signals that are coming to this comparator. So in such type of systems, they are referred to as blocks in parallel. So the the final transfer function, or if you apply, if you reduce this, which can be proved, comes out to be equal to, so again, a mistake here, G1, G2, and G3. So this final transfer function comes out equal to G1. You take this G2. So you have a plus sign on G1 side. So this is plus G1 plus minus G2. 
and plus minus g3. So this is what is written over here, g1 plus minus g2 plus minus g3. So this is the final transfer function of these three parallel connected blocks. So this can also be proved similarly uh, as we did in the previous slide. So if suppose this is signal x, then what you get at this block output is x times g2. And at this side, you get output as x times g1. And this is x times g3. So what you get here is x g1 plus minus x g2 plus minus x g3. And let's call this output as y. So the output y will be equal to x g1 plus minus x g2 plus minus x g3. Or in other words, y by x will be equal to g1 plus minus g2 plus minus g3. So this is what is written over here. So you have x and y, the transfer function of which will be g1 plus, plus minus g2 plus minus g3. So when two or blocks, more blocks are connected in parallel, the resultant block is the sum of individual block transfer function. The third rule applies to takeoff point. So what is the takeoff point? So we refer to this particular point as takeoff point. So from where the signal is being picked. So a signal was being fed. So if you suppose this has signal X, this has Y. So this is also Y. So we are picking the signal Y from this particular point. So this may be going to some uh, other blocks within the system. So that will be a part of system not shown over here. So if you're going to shift this particular takeoff point from this point, which is after the block, to a point before the block. So we are going to shift this point at this particular location. So what changes are going to happen? So if this was X, this is Y. And if you shifted this point before the block, in that case, if you suppose you shifted this at this particular point, the signal here would now become X which was in case of output y so the output y is nothing but x times g well if you are going to shift this takeoff point at this location now the output you are going to get at this point will be y equal to x so you are supposed to get output x times g so which means that then you are, you are supposed to connect a block at this location, which is nothing but shown over here. So we have connected up the same block with the same transfer function and thus we get the output, which is nothing but y times y equal to g times x. So while if you, uh, rule three has two parts. One is if you're going to shift the takeoff point from this location to backward location. The second part say, says that if you're going to shift the takeoff point from a location before the block. So we're going to shift from this point before the block to a point after the block. So now in this case, what is going to happen is in this particular case, you were getting this as y equal to g x. When you got this, let's say this is z, z is equal to x. So if you're going to shift this ahead of the block, this is same y equal to g x. But now the output z, if you're not going to attach this block. So if you shift this at this location, you get z equal to g x. So this is an additional term. g is the additional term which has to be removed. So in order to remove this g term, what we do is we attach a block with reciprocal of g. So we are going to attach a block with 1 upon g. So the output that you will be getting at this particular point is g x and this will be multiplied by 1 upon g to give you final output z equal to x. I guess this is clear to all. If you have any question, you can stop me at any point and ask me questions on the same. And again, you have rule four, which talks about shifting a summing point. So again, it has two parts. One says that if you're going to shift the summing point from a location before the block to a location after the block. So this is the location before the block and we're going to shift this 
after the ground. So in this case, what is going to happen? Let's assume the signal is x, this is y. So the signal that we'll be getting at this point will be x plus minus y. And this will be multiplied by gain g to give you g times x plus minus y. So if you're going to shift this summing point at this particular location, let's say the situation now turns to be g and we shifted the summing point y here. This is plus and this is plus minus. This was x. So now what output are we going to get is g times x plus minus y. But it should have been g times x plus minus g times y. So we are going to attach a block g shown over here. So if you attach this block g at this signal, then what you get output is gx plus minus gy. Likewise, if you're going to shift the summing point after the block to a point before the block, in that case, you can analyze the output what way you were getting. So if suppose this is y and this is z. So y was equal to gx plus minus z. But if you're going to shift this back, back side of the block, then in that case, you will be getting y equal to gx plus minus gz. So because the uh, signal from z side would be passing through g and thus the gain will be multiplied by g. And so this g has to be removed. In order to remove this g, what we are going to do is we are going to attach a gain, the reciprocal, uh, the gain which has a value 1 upon g. So if you are going to feed z here, you have a signal z here and x here. So if you analyze the output, y will be coming equal to this value, g x plus minus z. So in fact, uh, I suggest and I inform you that you, there is no need to learn any of these rules. So it's, it's, it's a waste of time to recite the rules. If you are capable of analyzing, understanding how things are working, so you will be able to solve the problems without learning the rules. So we'll discuss about the problems later on, but I suggest that you, it's better if you understand the rules, but there is no need to recite them, no need to learn them. The fifth rule says that if you're going to eliminate a summing point, so if suppose that you have a block representation given in this form. So be careful with this representation. This is very different from parallel representation. It's not parallel representation. You have a feedback loop. So this is a, a feedback. So this is different from the parallel representation that you studied here. In case of parallel representation, what you have is you have input from the input side. Let's say this is x. So you'll be having input from x fed to all the blocks simultaneously while their output will be fed to the comparator or summed together. So this is uh, parallel representation. Well, if you have feedback loop, so this is a feedback loop. What does feedback loop means that the additional block shown over here or the second block shown has its input from the output of the first block. So output of GS is fed to the input of HS and then uh, the output of HS is used as uh, a feedback or is fed to the comparator to be compared with the signal fed to G. So this is a, a feedback arrangement. So you'll be having different rule for this. Recall this rule as eliminating a summing point. So this is not the parallel representation. So in such signals, so you can again analyze things. So if you are going to assume this as signal x, this as y. So the final transformation that you will be obtaining by eliminating the two blocks and obtaining the final single representation, block representation, the transformation will be g over 1. Uh, a slight correction is also here. So this is, this should be 1 minus plus. So if you're going to take this as 
plus or let's say minus because uh, most of the signals that will be used in uh, control systems are negative feedback. So if you are going to have a negative feedback, that is, this is minus sign. So you have a negative sign over here. So in that case, the expression will have a plus sign here. So this can be proved. Suppose this is a signal X, this is Y. And we assume the signal as at the comparator output as E, error signal. So E is nothing but X minus Y H. So the second input to the comparator is from block H, which is nothing but the output Y multiplied by H. And what is Y? So Y is nothing but error multiplied by or E multiplied by G. And if you substitute this here, you get this equal to x minus y h multiplied by g. And this can further be simplified by taking all the terms associated with y at one side, 1 plus g h, which is equal to x times g. And from this, you get y by x as g over 1 plus g h. So you see this, if you're going to have a negative sign over here, what you get at the output will be having a plus sign. So you'll be having g over 1 plus g h. Had this been plus, so if the second input to the comparator had a plus sign, in that case, you would have get got a minus sign here. So it should, should be minus. So the signs, sign at the input side of the comparator and in the expression will be alternate. So if this is minus, this will be plus, And if this, this is plus, then this will be minus. And the sixth rule says that we're going to rearrange summing point. So rearranging will be also required while you'll be solving problems. So in order to make simplify problems, and when will this be required? Will be discussed when we uh, will be having actual. We'll be solving actual problems in hand. So let's say you have two comparators connected in this fashion, and to the to the one comparator you have input x and plus minus y. To other comparator you have and the signal Z with a plus minus sign. So the output from the second comp comparator will be X plus minus Y and plus minus Z. So this is quite easier to understand and I think there is no explanation uh, required for this. So this can also be represented by shifting this particular summing point. So what we are doing is we are shifting this summing point at this location and this summing point at this location. So when we shift or we interchange the summing point, what we get is this arrangement uh, with the same output. And this can also be represented with a single summing point having uh, more than three, more than two inputs. So you have an input as X, the other input as Y with plus minus sign and Z as plus minus sign. So you always get this exp expression. So the, uh, this is the last rule. And using all these six rules, you'll be solving or you'll be reducing the blog diagram representation. So we summarize each of these rules again. So if suppose you have blocks in cascade, this is cascade and blocks will be multiplied together. If you have blocks in parallel, they have uh, common inputs and output are being fed to comparator, then all the blocks will be summed or subtracted depending upon what sign is being taken at the comparator. And if you have to shift the takeoff point from a point after the block to a point before the block, then you're going to add an additional block with the same game. And if you have to shift the same point ahead of the block, in that case, you're going to add a block with reciprocal of the game. Likewise, if you have a summing point which has to be shifted ahead of the block, in that case, you're going to multiply with the same game. And if you're going to shift it backside, then you'll be multiplying with the gain, which is reciprocal of the main or the gain in the block. And for elimination of summing point, then you will be having an expression uh, which is uh, g over. So the signs are again different here. So this is g for uh, 
So this, there's a correction here. So this will be minus plus. So if you're going to take minus sign, you'll get a plus sign here. And if you're going to take a plus sign, in that case, you get a minus sign. And likewise, if you're going to rearrange the selling point, so in that case, uh, the same thing which is shown here. So my tab is uh, running over the screen. So these are all the six uh, rules that will be applied while uh, while going for block diagram reduction. And if you have any question or query, understanding each of these rules.